It was a crazy ass fucking building. But if I didn't end up there, I would end up at the hotel. But it didn't matter. I always tried to stay past the gas station. So on the way up to Josh's, I could stop in the gas station, steal a pack of cigarettes. Oh my God. It was like automatic. And I timed it every time the little guy went outside to pump gas, I would zoom in there. And he'd go, hey, what's happening? Nothing. Let me go inside and get something to drink. I'd have like a dollar. <laughs> and I'd put my hand up. I'd have like cools, a pack of parliaments, then voila, Marlboro lights or camel lights. Oh. You were like a, you were torturing that. Pol- How long were you <laughs> living like this? And then I would go <laughs> off the corner. If I was really hungry and I had no money, I would go to Josh Wolf's. Okay. If I had money, I would go to the fucking the Sunset Grill. That's way before you came. That was when it was the original Sunset Grill with the guy with the platform foot, and he had like a little stump up, and he had he would make the burgers, and he oh it was fucking tremendous. And what? then something happened there. The guy died, and then they redid it, and then it, there were egg and cheese sandwiches. Nice. And I would go in there, and all the East Coast dudes would be in there. The guy from Buffy, the good-looking guy that's still on fucking TV. He's from Philly. So we had that. We had El Compadre. We had Charlie Chan. I had a tab with him. And what year did you have a tab? 1997. Talk, trust me. It was tough talking to a Chinese guy to <laughs> give you a tab. It was 10 cents a copy, 25 cents for a copy of your headshot. You know, then he would lend me the staples. I would sit there and staple them and shit and fucking torture him. <laughs> How Charlie much were you Chan. printing that you needed a tab? And the guy's name was like Mike, but I oh. did not care. I call him Charlie Chan. That's the name on the fucking door. It's Charlie Chan. <laughs> Charlie Chan, just like the fuck. Was he thing. Asian? No, he was Puerto Rican. Yeah, he was Chinese. The guy was Chinese. He was very businesslike, <laughs> uptight. And I would go in there and go, where's Charlie Chan? And he would come over. My name is Mike. Okay, listen, Mike. Let's not go. Like a week later, every Monday I was in there because I had to make copies for the agents. I was working a scam with the agents because every week somebody would get a headshot. One Monday would be my theatrical agent, and one Monday would be my commercial agent. And I would do that every week. I would do those copies. That He opened at 9. I was in there at 9 one Already tortured. What's Charlie Chan? <laughs> For the hundredth, like how long? How long are you doing this to this to these people? Charlie, my my name is Mike. What's that? I just love that. He, my name is Mike. For the six hundredth time, my name is Mike. And I would, yeah, the yes, no debt. I'd be in there <laughs> week later. Charlie Chan, what's cracking today? <laughs> my name not Charlie Chan. It's Mike. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it was Holy a. Sh- it was a. Re- See, this is the shit I forgot. Like th- I gotta write a book about this shit. And then I started waking up at the hotel. The guy that owned the comedy club in Florida sold it, and he showed up in Hollywood with like four hundred thousand cash. And every night he'd go to the store with an ounce of coke, and fucking. Jesus. Every night they ended up at that hotel right across from the Sunset Inn, whatever, ratty little hotel. Then I got the commercial and I had a little Gitas now. I moved up into the world. So there was a hotel. This is very interesting. There was a hotel on Schrader. Okay. It later became the hostel. Oh, okay. But that hotel was a hotel where you're only allowed to stay in there for three weeks. And then they would transfer you to where the pizza place was up there next to the other laundry mat. And then once you did three weeks up there, you couldn't be there as a certain residence. So when me and the girl broke up, I would go in there and stay for a week and then go on the road and then come back and then stay there for three days and go on the road. Brother, you don't know what life is till you wake up in that part of town at that time. That was the old Hollywood. And I would come out of there. There was fucking people yelling in that hotel room. There'd be people hanging out in the hallway. It was real, Jack. Did you have a car? Or no, you didn't have a car at this point. It depended what day it was. 
How 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 can it possibly can- depend? Because he always bump into a car who's not leaving town for two weeks because they're going to Miami to do comedy. And here I am doing 90 around town, getting tickets. They come back. (laughs) (laughs) You did not get tickets under other people's cars, did you? Uh, Come on, man. In those days, when you get to L.A., the first thing about L.A. or any city you move into, how they welcome you is with parking tickets. They confuse you. They confuse you. get out there every morning with your robe. What, what, what is the meaning of this? And they're like, this, it's from 9 to 11. And you're like, okay, I won't have it out here. And then the next day you come out there at 845, and they got your car already hooked up. Then a week later, again, you get another ticket. Now you got to go down there and take the car. And it's it's just, when I got to L.A., I was, do, you know, my motto was, you buy them, I smash them. That was like my brother, <laughs> my fucking R.I.P. brother's fucking motto. So it was... Uh, Doug Stanhope had a car, but it was great. You could use it, air conditioning. There was only one problem. The gauge didn't work, so you didn't know whether the car was full or empty. Sometimes you got in that motherfucker and you just had to pray till you got to the gas station. And again, I wasn't Johnny Deep Pockets. I would just go there with a food stamp, you know, whatever I could hustle up the night before. Times were tough. And how long did it take until you had like a like a legit apartment? Was it with was it with your wife that you got your first apartment? Six months before that, can you believe that? If how long just, was that? If I would have just held off six more months, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you would have saved three thousand dollars. I met my wife in July of two thousand. I agreed to pay rent at my friend's house. When I got there. He didn't have a room for me. He had a couch. Oh. And if I felt a little double-crossed, you know, whatever. Listen, I lived there. Some months he took rent. Some months he didn't. It was a crazy time for everybody. You got to remember, that year opened up with me not being in L.A. I, was, I didn't spend New Year's in L.A. that year. I was in El Paso. No. Yes. No. <laughs> Yes, I was in El Paso and to Y2K. That next July is when I met my wife. Turn off your TVs, run for your lives. It's over. They didn't put you on this planet just to give up. If Uncle Joey could do it, I could fucking rule the world. That's what you gotta be thinking. Welcome back to Chicago!